Hello there everyone, I am Pepino here, back for another Kerbal Space Program tutorial. Okay, so, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to build an interplanetary ship, and we are starting with our tutorial moon lander because we want to use the launch stage for it. So, what we're going to do is we are just going to remove this launch stage, and then we're going to get rid of this, and then we're going to build our ship, and then we're going to reattach the launch stage. So, what we want for our interplanetary ship is, uh, let's start with this command pod, so we can get three Kerbals on our ship. That'll be good. And let's say you just want to build a basic interplanetary ship that will get these three Kerbals uh, to their destination and back. Alright, so what we're going to do is then we are going to add, obviously, some SAS here. There we are. And we will add then some fuel. Or we should add, should we add RCS there or? You could add it there if you want a lot. If you only want a little, add it up to the top. That is my advice. Okay, then uh, we're gonna want fuel. So let's just grab this. And what we're gonna do is basically, um, and again, this is a very, very simple interplanetary ship. Um, some of my other videos, like my past series, have more complicated interplanetary ships and things like that. Uh, but this is just a simple to understand, uh, easy to follow version. So, we are going to put uh, tanks on the side here, and then we are going to put these nuclear engines. Uh, nuclear engines are what you want for interplanetary journeys because they are incredibly, incredibly efficient. So that is why we are doing that. Now, what I want to add is under utility, let's go to batteries, and let's add one just to the top of each of these, and then we'll be good on batteries, so we won't have to put any anywhere else. That'll be plenty of power. Then, um, let's see, what else? do we want? Um, we need fuel lines or ducts and we need to get four of them going from the inner tank. Remember click on the inner tank first so from there out to there which will feed into these engines obviously. So that is good. Then we need our aerodynamic stuff on the tops of these so here we go plop that on plop these on. You could add your science experiments if you wanted, honestly. You could put four of the Materials Bay science experiments on here if you wanted, um, and then put that on. But I don't need science, and if you're in sandbox mode, neither do you. So, there we go. Um, so we've got this. Uh, if you wanted, you can attach a docking port to the top. We might as well do that, actually. That's a good thing to have. If you have a docking port, up here on top. In fact, we should use the shielded one because aerodynamics. So, there we go. We've got a docking port on top. Now, what we need to do is we need to add a docking port senior here, flip it upside down, and add it to the bottom. And that is going to be important because uh, we are going to dock this to the launcher, basically that is going to be the plan and is that going to clip through the nuclear engines no it is not so that is going to work so we've got this the idea would be that this launch stage can get this all the way up into orbit and if it can do that uh, then we'll be good I think it can and if not it can get us close enough that the solid or that our nuclear engines should be able to get us the rest of the way so, we are going to rename this, obviously, Tutorial Interplanetary Ship. There we go. Okay, so let's save. And let's take a look. Are we forgetting anything? Yes, we are. We are forgetting power generation. We need utility. We need generators. And let's uh, put four of them just on there like that and let's put some solar panels on the outer tanks here and maybe right up 
here. Okay, so we have got all of that, and that should be everything that we need. Um, let's get the launch clamps and put them on, just because it's probably a good practice to be into just doing that regularly. Okay, so that is going to be good. Let's save, let's launch, and test this thing out. Scratch that, we forgot something. Uh, I noticed it as soon as I clicked launch and this thing started wobbling. We do not have struts yet. So, uh, we go under structural, and struts for any large craft, if you don't have struts anywhere, you're forgetting something. So, place all of these struts on just to connect up, and hopefully that will be good enough to keep this thing stable. So, Let's place one more. Goes down like that. Okay, there we go. Now let's save, and we can actually launch this time. Okay, here we are. We are ready to go. So let's turn on our SAS, throttle all the way up, and launch. So this is going to be the same uh, as our moon lander tutorial launch. It's the same launch system and asparagus stage. So, uh, we just gotta wait for the first liquid fuel tanks to run out and then we can ditch them and the whole basic same process over again. We just have to hope that it works uh, well enough to get this heavier thing up into orbit. And it should. This, this heavy launcher, if you can build this and reuse this, it is very useful. Um, it can get most ships up into orbit, unless you're going something ridiculously big, uh, in which case, maybe not. But at that point, uh, if you're building something that big, hopefully you can handle building a launcher for it. So, we are up through up to 5,000 meters now. We've ditched the first tank, and yeah, just screaming through the atmosphere. Hopefully we'll get up to the thinner part here pretty darn quick, and that'll help a lot. Then we'll be able to start doing our gravity turn and everything. Um, ideally, we'd be turning a little bit right now, but practically I don't know if we want to try that. Oh, the other thing, I just realized something. I forgot to add RCS thrusters to this, so that RCS tank on top is useless. I'm not going to need it for this mission, um, I don't think, but if you want to use it, if you want to dock anything to this ship, you're going to want to add RCS thrusters that can help you control it. And this ship is pretty big, so you're probably going to want a bigger tank of RCS uh, as well, if you're going to be doing a lot with it. If you're not, going to be using it often, then you can get away with small tanks. But um, that is up to you guys to decide how you want to use your ship and make your variations and stuff like that. I'm not here to teach you exactly how to do things. I'm here to teach you the basics and show you a way to do things. And then you guys have to make your variations and experiment out on your own to see, okay, this works. What if I change this? How does it work? And that is basically how you figure out this game. And it's a lot of fun. It's a very fun process of learning uh, and getting to see explosions and things like that. And it's very satisfying once you actually achieve what you're going for. So, here we go. We are definitely going out into space now. We can turn directly to the side here and start burning just to extend our orbit. And this launcher is actually going to be um, phenomenal for this. We're going to have plenty of fuel left once we're up in orbit to even start our interplanetary burn, uh, which is nice if you can do that with a mainsail or a skipper engine, whatever we got on the middle stage. I think it's a skipper. Uh, because the nuclear engines are incredibly, incredibly efficient, but they, um, they're slow as heck, basically. The other thing, this is very, very important, very important, and I completely forgot. Disable crossfeed. It doesn't matter yet, uh, but once you get down to burning this last tank, if you don't disable crossfeed, it'll take all the fuel from this big tank and burn it with this engine, and you don't want that. You want to save it for your nuclear engines. So make sure you 
uh, right click on this docking port here and click disable crossfeed or maybe it's this bottom docking port above the above the orange tank that docking port click on it disable your crossfeed or you will be very very unhappy uh, when you try to burn your nuclear engines and realize you have hardly any fuel for them and all of a sudden you're lugging around a big empty tank that you didn't even get to use with them so yeah it'd be it'd be just a bad day for you if you forget to do that I've done it in the past it's never fun so there we go we are going to just keep burning and extending our orbit here and once we get up into orbit what I'm going to do is basically take you guys through and teach you about each of the different launch windows for each of the different planets or places that you would want to go and uh, the reason I'm going to do that is because that's something you really need to know before you go anywhere you can't just launch yourself into space and say okay I'm gonna find a maneuver node that gets me to jewel now uh, the reason you need to do specific launch windows is because otherwise it's horribly uh, inefficient fuel wise and sometimes you can't even get there so you have to wait until your orbit and your target planets orbit are aligned in a certain way um, and I will teach you guys all of that uh, with this interplanetary ship basically so uh, that will probably actually be in the next tutorial video which I will release uh, probably right after this one is released and it is um, the reason I'm gonna do it in a separate video is because it's just gonna show you each of the launch windows quickly and people who want to see that may not want to watch me building this whole thing they may know how to do that um, so there will be a separate tutorial coming right after this that's going to show you how to get each of your um, interplanetary launch windows figured out. Okay, so we're burning up the apoapsis. We have been for a little while, and I'm in times four speed here. There we go. We are going to achieve orbit, and we have achieved orbit, so we can kill this and what remaining fuel we have here we will be able to then use uh, to start our interplanetary burn and then we'll have this stage to carry us the rest of the way so as far as building and preparing an interplanetary ship goes this is very good um, you have a ton of fuel to mess around and do a lot of stuff you should be able to get this pretty much anywhere so that is going to be the end of this tutorial uh, it's, I was just teaching you how to set up an interplanetary ship and build it and um, you guys can fly it however you want basically you burn uh, you set up your maneuver node which I again will teach you how to do in the next video and then you burn this until this one is empty then you just undock and fire up these engines and continue as normal so it's pretty self-explanatory hopefully you should be able to figure it out and hopefully this was helpful for you so thank you guys for watching and I will see you all next time